old Dr. Bones here. No, not there. Over here. <laughs> Ignore that guy. I'm Joe Alton MD, also known as Dr. Bones. I'm a geezer on the go, a codger with a calling, an ancient with an aspiration. That's to keep you and your family healthy in times of trouble. Check out our articles at doomandbloom.net and our Amazon bestseller, The Survival Medicine Handbook, now on our website and at Amazon.com. Our focus is for scenarios in which modern medical care and medical professionals are no longer accessible, leaving you as the end of the line with regards to any medical issues that might occur. A quick disclaimer, practicing medicine without a license is illegal and punishable by law. If you need a brain transplant and there's a hospital and a brain surgeon nearby, don't try to do it yourself. You know that in good times, we have the luxury of modern facilities and advanced techniques to isolate a sick patient from healthy populations. If we ever find ourselves in a grid down scenario, most of these advantages will go the way of the dinosaur and we will be placed in well, essentially the same medical environment that we experienced in the 19th century. We do have the benefit of knowledge of sterilization though and the way contagious diseases are spread. So we do have a head start on our ancestors. Using this knowledge, it should be possible for the medically prepared to put together a sick room or a hospital tent that will minimize the chance of infectious disease running rampant through a family or a mutual assistance group. Hopefully, when the you-know-what hits the fan, you'll have made or you will quickly make the decision to bug in or to bug out. If you're staying in place, pick a sick room. I would choose a sick room at one end of the house a room with a window or two to allow light and ventilation and a door that can be closed. If you're bugging out, choose a hospital tent and place it on the periphery of your camp. Making these decisions before things go bad is important, as you will inevitably be kicking someone out of the room or tent if you don't. As such, you can imagine there will be resentment at a time when everyone needs to pull together just to survive. If you don't have a spare room or a tent, you'll have to raise a makeshift barrier, such as a sheet of plastic perhaps, to separate the sick from the healthy. Even if you have a dedicated sick room, this might make sense to hang over the door for when you go in or out. You'll want to keep the traumatically injured separate from those with infectious diseases, such as influenza or pneumonia, Although sometimes wounds will become infected and you'll be dealing with both issues. If you're staying in place, your sick room's air conditioning ducts will be close to useless in a power down scenario. And they could actually pose a major risk to the rest of your group. Cover these ducts with, well, duct tape. Keep windows and tent flaps open though, if at all possible, except in particularly inclement weather, to allow ventilation. Furnishing should be minimal with a work surface, an exam area, and bed spaces. Cloth surfaces such as you see in sofas, carpets, etc. can harbor disease-causing organisms called pathogens, and they should be avoided if at all possible. Even bedding for the contagious might best be covered in plastic. The more areas that can be wiped down and disinfected easily, the better. Try to do that daily with a carpet. Now, it's important to have a way to eliminate waste products from your bedridden patients, even if it's just a five gallon bucket and some bleach. Have some closed containers like hampers to put used sick room items that need to be cleaned. A station near the entrance of the room or tent uh, with, for masks, gloves, gowns, and disinfectants are, is going to be very, very helpful. You'll need a basin with water and soap and towels that should be kept for the exclusive use of the caregiver. There should be only one person that's used survival medic involved in caring for the sick if at all possible, especially with possibly contagious illnesses. Now for supplies, get plenty of masks and gloves Gowns, for example, 
can be commercially made. They can be plastic coveralls, or they can even be just dry cleaning covers. Many people consider medical supplies to consist of gauze, tourniquets, battle dressings, but you must also dedicate sets of sheets, towels, pillows, cooking utensils, and other items for specific use in the sick room. Keep these items separate from bedding, bathing, and eating materials of the healthy members of your family or group, especially in contagious disease settings. This may seem excessive to you, but you can never ever have enough dedicated supplies for medical purposes. You may save the life of a loved one or even your entire group if you're diligent in putting together your medical stores. Cleaning supplies should also be considered medical preparedness items. You'll want the sick room as clean as possible and you want to clean it on a daily basis. Clean hard surfaces that may have germs on them with soap and water or use bleach or other disinfectants. These surfaces include doorknobs, tables, sinks, toilets, counters, and even children's toys. Wash bed sheets and towels frequently. Boil them if you have no other way to clean them. Consider bedding and clothes of the ill to be infected and wash or otherwise disinfect your own hands right after touching these items or the patient themselves. Ditto for plates, cups, etc. Any equipment brought into the sick room should stay there. One additional important uh, item for your sick room patients, give them a noisemaker of some sort. that will allow them to alert you when they need help. This will decrease anxiety and they'll give them some confidence that you'll know when they're in trouble. Planning a sick room is as important to your level of preparedness as storing food or preparing for the common defense. Get ready now and you'll keep it together even when everything falls apart. This has been Joe Alton, MD, also known as Dr. Bones, wishing you good health in good times or bad.